Using SFTP with Azure Blob Storage is now GA. In this video, we're going over SFTP with Azure Storage, why you may want to use it and how to set it up. Before that, please like, subscribe, share with a friend, and click the bell icon for notifications of new content. Seriously, a lot of people are watching and not subscribing. I have the analytics to prove it. Anyway, become a member for early access to videos, add free while private, and check out my courses on Azure Virtual Desktop and Hybrid Identities with Windows AD and Azure AD at Udemy.com. Back to it, let's start out with what SFTP is and what FTP is for that matter. FTP stands for File Transfer Protocol. It's a protocol that allows us to, well, transfer files. FTP has been around since the beginning of the internet as a way to move files between systems. Unlike Token Ring, Gopher, and MySpace, FTP is still around. But FTP has a problem. Like many technologies from back in the early days of the internet, security was not really a consideration. FTP provides for authentication and access control, but all data passed between the client and the server, including authentication, happen unencrypted. Anyone watching the traffic could view the credentials. SFTP fixes the security issues with FTP. The S in SFTP stands for SSH. That's the secure shell. Sometimes SFTP is called Secure File Transfer Protocol. SFTP is not simply FTP over the secure shell. It's an extension of the shell protocol that provides secure file transfer capabilities. Okay, so it's a secure way to transfer files. There are two components, a server and a client. The server accepts connections from the client. The client can then move files to and from the server depending on the level of access. Azure Storage can become an SFTP server. One thing I want to point out is this is a file transfer protocol. We can transfer files with SFTP. It's not a file storage protocol like SMB or SIFS, a Windows file share, for example, where we can open and edit a file from the remote share. Why use SFTP? It's a great option for transferring files between autonomous systems. One of the first ways I used FTP was to update website files transferring the web files edited on my local Windows system to a Linux-based web server. It's also helpful for any type of automation that requires moving files between systems. We can upload a file to a storage account and then use Event Grid to trigger an automation action on that file. A couple things to note about Azure Blob Storage SFTP. It requires a standard general purpose V2 or premium block blob storage account. The SFTP client uses port 22. Outbound port 22 has to be enabled on the firewall for the client. The storage account has to have hierarchical namespace enabled. This provides a directory structure with access control lists. This feature is enabled through the data lake storage gen 2 hierarchical namespace feature. If you want to use an existing storage account, you'll need to enable the data lake storage gen 2 hierarchical namespace feature before the SFTP option is available. Authentication is not integrated into Windows AD, and we can't use shared access keys. SFTP and Azure Blob Storage use local user accounts. These accounts are local to the storage account. We have two options for authentication methods. We can use a SSH username and password or SSH key value pairs. We have to create a local user for authentication. When we log in, the format of the username is the storage account name, followed by a dot and then the username. For example, if we have a storage account named CIR Storage 1 and a user name User 1, the username is CIR Storage 1 dot User 1. The full connection string for this example is CIR Storage 1 dot User 1 at CIR Storage 1 dot blob dot core dot windows dot net. If we're using SSH key pairs, there's an option to generate a new key pair, use an existing key stored in Azure or an existing public key. Let's move on to the Azure portal to create a new SFTP enabled storage account, add a user and transfer some files. We'll start in the Azure portal by creating the storage account. Search for storage accounts and create a new one. Select an existing resource group or create a new one. For this example, I'll create a new one. I'll call it CIR SFTP test RG. Give it a name. This name is part of a URL, so it can only be lowercase letters and numbers, and it has to be globally unique. 
CIR SFTP test for this example. Select your region, Central US for this example. We can use standard generation two or premium storage. Standard is cheaper, so we'll use that. And we'll use LRS since that too is cheaper. Go to advanced, scroll down to data lake storage gen two. We need to enable hierarchical namespace. Once we do that, the enable SFTP option becomes available. Now that it's available, enable SFTP. At this point, you can update the rest or skip ahead to review. Once validation passes, we'll create. Let's give that a minute to finish. That's done, now let's go to the resource. Here we are in the storage account. Let's create a container and a directory in that container for our users. We could create a container when we add the user also. Go to containers, add a new container called SFTP. Leave the access to private and click create. Now go into the container we just created and add a directory called home. We'll use that for the users we're about to set up. Let's go back to the storage account. Scroll down to settings. And we now have the option for SFTP. If you don't see the SFTP option, you'll probably see an option to upgrade to Data Lake Generation 2. SFTP is only available if Data Lake Gen 2 hierarchical namespace is enabled. You can enable that on an existing storage account if you want to use SFTP. From within the SFTP settings, we have the option to add a local user, disable SFTP, or disable a local user. As stated earlier, we can't use Azure AD or shared access signatures. We have to create an account local to the storage account. Let's add a local user. Let's give it a name, SFTP pass user for this example. This user will use password-based authentication. Next, we'll create a password. The password is automatically generated and we'll get that later. Go next to container permissions. Select the SFTP container. Optionally, you could create a new container in that storage account. We'll give this user all access, but you could limit it. Maybe some users only need read access to download files. Next, let's add a home directory. This is where users will start out when they log in. This setting won't prevent them from navigating outside of the home directory. Set the home to SFTP forward slash home. A home directory is required. Capitalization is important and the container has to be part of the path. Also, SFTP uses forward slashes. Let's click add to add the user. Here we'll get the SSH password. Copy and save that password. We'll need it coming up shortly. We can generate a new one if we lose the existing one. We'll close that. Let's add a second user with certificate-based authentication. We'll call this account SFTP cert user. Select SSH key pair for the authentication method. From here, we'll add a key. We have the options to generate a new key pair, use an existing key stored in Azure, or use a public key. We'll use a new key pair. Give it a name, SFTP access for this example. Add a description, key for SFTP access for this example. Go to next. We'll use the same SFTP container. And we'll give this user all permissions. For this user, we'll set the home directory to the root container. Let's click add. This time we get a private key. We need to download this private key and keep it safe. If we lose it, we'll have to recreate the account. Once downloaded, you can close the window. Next, we'll connect with the password authentication. There are a lot of clients available, both command-lined and GUI. You can even use OpenSSH from a PowerShell session. 
For this example, we'll use WinSCP, a graphical interface for SFTP. Any other clients that support SFTP will work in a similar way. First, we'll grab the connection string for the user account with password-based authentication. We'll copy that to the clipboard. From there, we'll open WinSCP. On the left side of the interface is the local side. This is my local hard drive. The right side is the remote or SFTP side. Once we connect, that's the side of the blob storage container. To connect, we'll open a new session. Make sure SFTP is selected for the protocol and add the connection string to the host name. The connection string is a combination of the username and the host name. If we hit tab at this point, WinSCP knows the username is in the connection string and it updates the host name and username. If your client doesn't automatically update that, you'll have to modify it manually. Let's add the password we saved earlier and click login. We get a prompt about an unknown server and its host key cache. Microsoft has a published list of host keys and their SHA-256 hash. I'll add a link to that below. You can add them or verify the hash. For this example, I'll click yes to add the key and continue. We're logged in. There's nothing on the right or the remote side. We're in our home directory. We can go up one directory. Now we're in the root directory. Remember, we set the user's home directory to the home folder. Let's upload some files and directories. We'll select the files on the left. We can right click and select upload. And then we'll just click OK. That's a small amount of files just for this demonstration, but now they're uploaded. Let's go back to the storage account. We'll go to containers. Go to the SFTP directory. That lists the files we uploaded. That's good, that means it's working. Let's go back to SFTP. We're gonna connect again, this time with certificate-based authentication. Let's grab the connection string for the user with the key pair authentication method. We'll go back into WinSCP. We can close the existing connection and that prompts us to open up a new one. From the new session, paste in the connection string. And if we tab, it updates that for us automatically. Again, if you're following along in a different client, you may have to update the username and the host name manually. We don't have a password for this session. Let's go into advanced. Under SSH, go to authentication. We're going to add a private key file. Search for the private key we downloaded when we set up the certificate-based account. For this client with Azure Storage SFTP, we have to change the file type to all files. The certificate we downloaded doesn't have a file extension. So we'll select it and open. And we also have to change the format of the certificate. So at this window, click OK. We'll accept the defaults and click Save. And then OK. We'll click OK again and log in. Now we're connected with the certificate. It shows the files uploaded from the password account also, we connected to the root of the container. That's what we had set up as the home directory for this account. That is how to enable SFTP on a new storage account and connect with password and certificate-based authentication. Thank you for joining me in this video. I hope this helps you better understand how to create and manage SFTP on an Azure storage account. Thanks for watching.